Okay, so um, I'm here today to talk to you about hodling releases uh, in the incubator. Who here has had or has been in the incubator at any point in time? A few hands? Yep, cool. And I've now voted on your release. <laughs> Minus one, yes. <laughs> There is a, there's a, well, was a joke going around for a while there that um, if I hadn't voted minus one on your release, then you were actually not a real ASF project. So <laughs> uh, I, I have voted on uh, more than a thousand releases. I've lost count, but it's around the 1,200, 1,300 mark at this point in time. So um, I'll have to go through all the mail lists and try and find it again. We've still got a couple of people just coming in, so I'll just wait till they, they get seated. All right, thanks for joining us. As I said, we're talking about podling releases. So a little bit about me, if you don't know who I am, there's a few faces here that I, I don't recognise. Uh, I've been involved with the ASF for more than a decade in a number of, of, of roles, but primarily I've been involved with the Apache Incubator and I'm currently the VP of the Apache Incubator. Um, I help out by mentoring several projects. I think I've mentored about 15 or 16 projects now. I've also sort of lost count of that, but it's of, of that order. Um, and as I said, I may have reviewed your release if you are in the incubator, and I may have voted minus one on it. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but it was for a good reason. So, as you know, all, well, most, not all, I should say, most projects that enter the ASF go through the incubator. And in the incubator, they learn how to behave like an Apache project and adopt what we call the Apache way. And that is about uh, collaborative, consensus-driven development that is done openly and transparently. Um, some projects don't have any problem with this. Some have a little more difficulty. Uh, but that's why we have an incubating project, to, to make sure... And during the incubating process, you will also uh, hopefully expand and diversify the contributors to your project. You will hopefully add more committers and PMC members. Um, you also try to follow the ASF policies, on, and particularly on licensing and branding, and you know what you need to do there. That is probably one of the most difficult things going through the incubator is to, to, to understand that as a project you are responsible for your brand and that includes making sure, sure that other people don't misuse your brand. Um, so we've had a, a, a few incidents uh, when that has not happened. Um, and, and this is what I'm going to be talking about in this talk is how to make releases. And then finally, after you've, you've done all of these things, you've added a few PMC members, you've added some committers, you can then, and you've made a, you know, a few releases, you can then graduate as a top level project. Um, that usually takes a year to a year and a half, but it can take a smaller amount of time or it can take longer. Uh, so, uh, and there are some projects you know, that have been in the incubator for four to five years before deciding that you know, maybe it's time to retire <laughs> and not graduate. So that does happen as well, but it's still pretty rare. So the whole, the whole when we're talking about releases, the, 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 the one thing that is the most important thing is that all ASF releases are under the Apache license. Now, this doesn't mean that they can't have other bits of software included or bundled inside them that are under different licenses, and I'll, I'll get to that uh, a little later in the talk. But the, the release as a whole is under the Apache license. And the Apache license, as you know, is business friendly. So you can use it for commercial products. Uh, it's pragmatic in a way that means it has very few restrictions on it. And that you can, uh, it means that just about anyone can take it and, and use it. Um, but there are some requirements that the Apache license itself puts on projects. And there are additional requirements that ASF policy puts on projects. So the ASF license itself says you must include the license text. 
Uh, you know, that's very easy to do. You just need a copy of the license and, and, and stick it in there. It also talks about a notice file and on the boilerplate Apache license, uh, that's optional. You don't have to do that. But with ASF policy, uh, you do have to include a notice file. So uh, that's a little bit of extra work. In most cases, that's fairly simple and straightforward. Uh, but in some cases, it gets a little more complex, particularly if you include a lot of third-party code that is also licensed under the Apache license, and they also have notice files. Um, one important thing to note about the Apache license is that there's no requirement to contribute back, and there is no requirement to share any modifications. Now, at the ASF, we do our development in the open, and we, so we do share everything, all the modifications are shared, but a third party can take our code and use it for whatever purpose they want uh, and not give those changes back. And that is perfectly fine. That is actually by design. Um, there have been some complaints recently about projects who don't contribute back to you know, the code that they take from. And, and it's unfortunate that they do that, but the license allows it. At the ASF, uh, we make source releases. So we may also make binary releases, but they're more a convenience to our users. Uh, so the things that you're, 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 when you're actually creating a lease, it's, it's going to be a source release. And each source release has a few things that need to go with it. It needs to have, for example, cryptographic signatures. Uh, so he, who here has been a release manager and has worked on a release? Okay, so I got about half the room there. Uh, who here is an incubating project and is working on releases? Okay, a couple of hands, so that's good. I'm not sure why the rest of you are here. <laughs> but, uh, are you just interested in, in what goes into making a release? Yeah, okay. Good. <laughs> so, um, now, because uh, an incubating project is still trying to learn the ropes and you know, it's not a top level project yet. Uh, all incubating projects need to have a disclaimer in them. And this disclaimer just says we're in incubating status and it may mean that we haven't got everything right. Um, it doesn't uh, reflect anything about the quality of the software uh, or you know, how mature it is, uh, but it just means that we may not have checked everything from a legal point of view. There's actually two different disclaimers that you can use. Uh, there's one which is a little more strict than the other. So there's one which is a work in progress disclaimer. And that means you can, you can say, well, there are definitely issues with this thing, but we're going to release it anyway. Just be aware that there really are issues and you probably don't want to use it in production. Because, uh, you know, it might have licensing issues or other issues along those lines. So you also need a, a license and a notice file, as I said. And those license and notice files need to include all of the third-party licenses that are bundled with inside your source release. So the license and notice relate directly to what you release. So that may be different to what you have in GitHub, and it may be different uh, between, say, a, a source release and a, convenient, a binary convenient release. So that the, the, they could have different contents there. So that's some, sometimes that can get a little complex. Um, all the source files that have been created at the ASF uh, or have been donated to the ASF should have headers on them. Um, and the most important thing at all, because it is a source release, it can't include compiled code. All right? um, there are some exceptions to that, but they're, they're pretty rare. Um, and we're, we're talking in the, you know, the general case here. Um, so, and that includes sometimes some common build tools. So, for example, an ASF release can't have, uh, help me out here, the Gradle wrapper uh, jar in the source release. That's a thing that is commonly accidentally put in there. Um, and, you know, you need to come up with some other way of making, having the user down that, download that by themselves or having a shell script to, you know, to kick it off and, uh, or something like that. There's usually, you know, workarounds and solutions to these and sometimes they take a little bit of e extra effort but it's usually not that onerous. So once you have created a release uh, and you have a, 
a, a source zip or a source tar file, um, you know, you then come to the voting process. So because incubating projects are not top level projects yet, um, they have a, uh, none of the, the, the members who work on the software are PMC members, so they can't actually make releases. It's only PMC members can make releases. So in this case, the incubator acts as that PMC. So what happens is that you, on the, the project itself, you'll create a source release, and then you'll call for a vote for it. And when you vote for it, you're gonna check to make sure that everything in the release is correct, like there's no binary files, uh, not no binary files, but no unexpected binary files, that you know, the licensing is, is all good, you have the disclaimer there, the cryptographic signatures are all fine, and all those sort of things. And if that's all good, um, you'll, you'll check that, and you'll vote plus one on it. And you just need three plus one votes, and more plus ones than minus ones, for it to become a release. The idea is here that it doesn't have to be perfect that it can have some minor issues in there. And even if someone says, well, I don't think we should release it because this test fails, um, you know, it's, maybe that's okay. It doesn't matter if it's a single test is failing. It's still a release and it's probably still better than your previous release. So the idea is to make small incremental changes and to release software often. Uh, and that provides greater benefit for the people who use your software. So once you have three plus one votes, and more plus ones than minus ones, you then can then go to the incubator, general mailing list, and call for a vote on the incubator there. And the, that, the same thing applies there, that it requires three plus one votes and more plus ones than minus ones. And if that passes, then you can create a release. If either of those two steps fail, then you have to create another, fix whatever the issue was, and create another release candidate and vote on it again. So sometimes, particularly if it's your, you know, your first or second release, um, and it, particularly if you've got a, you know, a complex project that has a lot of third-party code in it or has a complex build system or some other you know, reason, um, sometimes it, this can end up creating quite a few release candidates. So most projects, it's generally just one or two, uh, but I have seen a project, for example, who got up to 14 release candidates um, before they managed to make a release. Uh, the, the one, one of the reasons why they went that far was every time they ran into an issue, they stopped checking, uh, uh, and there were other is undiscovered issues in the next release candidate. So it's a good idea that if you, if you, even if you do find an issue on a, on, a, on a release, that you check absolutely everything just in case there are other issues there, because that may save you time in, in creating a, a release candidate. Um, the other good thing is, uh, well, a bit of advice that I'll give you, is you have these two votes, but remember on the first vote, you have your mentors voting. All of your mentors for the project are incubator PMC members, so if you get three of them voting plus one on your first vote, you've already got the three plus one votes on the second vote. So that makes it really easy for you. So try and engage with your mentors and, and get them voting on re your releases, or if you are, putting a proposal into the incubator and selecting mentors, perhaps select ones that are active in releases that will help, help you out. So it just means things will go a lot, a lot smoother. Whoops. So why might I vote minus one on your release? <laughs> well, why anyone might vote minus one on your release? Well, I've mentioned, you know, a couple of the issues already. Um, it could, and these, these are roughly in order, let me think. Of, of, of what would happen. Uh, so the most, one of the most common issues is that there is some binary code, some compiled code in the release. So a jar may have slipped in, or there was a, you know, uh, I've seen a couple of times there's been executables or binary files uh, that, that are there. Sometimes these files weren't caught because they were part of the, say, testing framework. Um, uh, there's no exception for that. You, know, you still, you know, you still have to make sure that someone can take your release and know exactly what it contains. Either they can look at all the source code and they can compile the source code to, to 
to, to, to make the release from that. Um, it shouldn't include third-party software that has incompatible licenses. At the ASF, we, we put licenses in three categories. There's category A, category B, and category X. And a source release can only include stuff from category A. So including something from category X, such as GPL license code, is not allowed. And neither is, in general, category B either. Um, there may be an issue with the license notice. So the license needs to list all of the software that is included in the release, it may be missing some of those. So you haven't abided by the terms of the licenses of the, that third party software. Uh, and you know you need to fix that up. Um, copyright issues, I have on four occasions voted minus one on a release because of cat pictures included in there. So people like cats, people like copying photos of cats off the internet that they don't have permission to include. Uh, don't do that, please. <laughs> So, uh, um, and then usually there's a couple other, you know, uh, issue, issues with missing headers on files. Uh, it's not a huge problem, but it, it can indicate that this, maybe these files are third party files, not ones that were created at, at Apache. And so we don't know what license they're under. So we just need to be clear about what license all these files are under. And any file uh, should have a header. And, and this is a, another thing, you should never modify a header on a, an existing third party file. Don't swap it off with an Apache one or remove the header or anything along those lines because uh, that makes it you know, much more difficult. And very rarely, um, there's some, some regulations around including encryption software in, in software in, in the US. Uh, so there's some, some, some process around that that you need to follow. But that being said, uh, a minus one is not a veto. As I was saying before, you only need three plus ones and more plus ones and minus ones to be able to release software. And you can also change your mind on votes. You don't, it's not just vote once. You can actually, uh, there's sometimes people, there's a, a saying that people say, uh, vote often <laughs> and vote many, <laughs> which is sort of, you know, contradictory to normal voting procedure. But you can actually change your mind and vote again on, on, on something. Um, you can also make conditional votes. You can say, well, if you fix this up in the next release, I'm going to vote plus one on it. You know, it's not a major issue. Uh, it really should be fixed, but you're an inc incubating project and that's fine. Like, you know, you're just trying to learn this stuff. You don't have to get everything right the first go. Um, now, votes that are binding on releases are only from the incubator project management committee. Uh, but if someone else votes minus one on your release, you might want to listen to what they have to say because, you know, it's, uh, they may have picked up something that's serious and, and a concern. And as I was saying before, it doesn't need to be perfect. Don't try and make, particularly when you start out in the incubator, don't try and make every single vote perfect. Uh, all it has to be is better than the previous release. That's what you should be aiming at. Um, and there's reasons why you may not get it right the first time. Uh, and this is the, why we have an incubating process. You may not be familiar with the rules. Um, you know, we have a lot of documentation. Some of it is hard to understand. Sometimes you've come across a situation which we haven't considered before. And we, you know, there, there may not be that documented anywhere. Um, it may be, in some cases, there are many ways to solve the same problem and you just need to work out what is the best one in your, in your situation. One of the things I, I hear a lot is when projects come to the ASF, they complain about how many rules and regulations they are. The thing you have to understand is that there isn't actually a lot of rules and regulations. There's a few core things that you, you, you have to do, but the rest are guidelines and good practice and they may not actually apply to your individual situation. This does mean that you can do things in a different way. Um, just because someone said it has to be done this way or it's written down as you, you know, have to do it this way, if you can come up with a good reason for why you shouldn't do it that way, then that's probably perfectly acceptable. Um, so that's, that's certainly one thing to keep in mind. 
There is a danger with that as well in that what happens is a lot of projects will look to see what other projects are doing, some of the top, you know, the more popular top level projects, and because they see them doing something in a particular way, they will think, okay, that's fine to do. But they don't understand the context that that was done in. And because they don't understand that context, they may misapply it, and it may not even apply to their project as well. It, it, it could be, uh, you know, just something that is not appropriate in their, in their situation. Uh, so you've, you, you've got to be careful to try and understand the reasons about why things were done in a certain way, and quite often in projects that's not documented at all. It'll be hidden on the mailing list somewhere. There would have been a discussion about it a year ago. You know, it was 150 messages long, and <laughs> you don't want to read that. So, <laughs> so uh, what you want to aim for is that if I, as an incubator PMC member, I look at your release, I don't want to be surprised by anything. I, if, if I open this up and I think, what is that? <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not a good thing. All right. So as long as you clearly document stuff uh, and use the right disclaimer, um, you know you're generally going to be pretty pretty good at getting getting your your release past the incubator on your first try. Um, one of the other reasons that you know releases don't pass because of licensing issues is that we're not really good at licensing. You know, most of us are developers. Most of us have rudimentary understanding of these legal issues and sometimes it's unclear you know uh, particularly if you're dealing with third-party software a lot of it may say it's under one license but if you look closely and look inside it there may be other licenses involved um, it may be in some cases totally unclear what license it's under sometimes they don't even say what license it's under which is which is even worse um, and yeah, and people seem to think they're funny and come up with humorous licenses as well, which may or may not be compatible with uh, the, uh, the Apache license. Um, is everyone familiar with do what the F you want license? Yes, so that exists. Um, it's obviously a permissive license. <laughs> right? You can do anything with the software that you want. Um, it's not compatible with the Apache license. Does anyone want to take a guess why? No? No? Okay. Um, because you can do whatever you want. So it means you can ignore licensing conditions. <laughs> so, you know. Um, however, I think there's an, uh, another one. What was it? The WTF license? Um, that one is actually compatible with the Apache license. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's like... Uh, try, try and maybe, in, in some cases what you have to do in these situations is look at the licensing of what you're including and maybe choose something else that can do the same job that's under a better license. You know, that's, that's often the best way forward because ev even if you think, well, you know, maybe we could do this, well, maybe you cannot, the, the, the amount of effort in working it out when it can just be replaced with something that's under a BSD license, which is we know is compatible with the Apache license, you know, makes it much, much easier. So as I was saying before, the, the licenses are in three categories. And um, the first category is category A, and that is things that are compatible with the Apache license. And this means you can include them in your source release and you can de depend on them as a dependency. Um, basically, anything in category A can't add any restrictions above and beyond what's in an Apache license. So if you come across a license that says can only be can't be used for commercial purposes, that's a restriction of use, that's not going to be compatible with the Apache license, and in fact that's going to be a Category X license, and you can't use it. So the common licenses that you'll run into uh, with this are MIT, BSD, well most of BSD licenses, there's a few BSD licenses that aren't compatible, uh, the one with the advertising clause, you very, very rarely run into that these days. It's, 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 you know, you mostly find it in software written in the mid-90s, I guess, maybe early 90s even. Anyway, doesn't matter. And there's a few other ones there as well, uh, which are quite common. The second one is cat Category B, and this is a little more complex. 
in general, you can't include them in a source release, but there are some exceptions. So, uh, for example, if you're talking about uh, binary uh, media files, so if you, you know, some pictures or some sound effects or maybe even a video, and that's under a category B license. Um, it's not compiled code, so that's okay, and it's, um, so it's actually okay to include, because it's, it's not code, and even though it is under a license that's not really compatible with the Apache license, you're not going to modify it, you're not going to change it. Uh, so in that case, it's, it's sort of okay. Um, so the, there are common license here, so the CDDL license, the Eclipse public license, Mozilla public license and some of the Creative Common licenses. That's the one that normally trips people up, is those Creative Common licenses, because they're generally seen as quite permissive, and in actual fact, they, they have some clauses in there that make them not so permissive. Now, uh, Category B stuff can't be included in a source release, but it can be included in your binary release. So. And finally, we get to Category X, and these are things that you can't depend on, and you can't include in a source release. There are some exceptions for depending upon, and they uh, refer to some common build tools, and also if it is actually optional. Now, it has to be truly optional. You cannot just say uh, to all users, just download this extra bit of software and put it in there. Because if everyone has to use it, then it's a real dependency. It's category X. That means the whole software is Say, if it's GPL license, that means everything is now GPL, and GPL is not compatible with the Apache license. Oddly enough, the Apache license is compatible with the GPL license, uh, so that also makes things a little confusing. Uh, but in, in the ASF case, we can't include GPL code. Um, so uh, GPL, LGPL, any sort of non-commercial license. Um, the JSON license, but I believe this has changed recently. The JSON license used to have a clause in it that said, um, do good, not evil. And that seems, you know, fairly innocuous. But, you know, when you start thinking about it, you know, what is good and what is evil and who defines that and all the rest, it, 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 it's like that's not compatible with the Apache license. Um, and I, for years, uh, I'm trying to think of his name, Doug someone, isn't it? who came up with the original JSON library. Anyway, for years he said he'd never change it, but I think in a, the last couple of years he has actually changed his mind and that clause is now being removed. Uh, so it may be that modern things under the JSON license are compatible. And then finally, we get to binary distributions. And these are not actually official releases, even though these may be used more than your source releases by your users. Um, and they need to comply with exactly the same way that the source release would. The thing with binary convenience releases is that they contain a lot more things generally. They contain a lot more third-party code, and so your licenses and notice files may be more complex because they, they just contain more stuff. Right? Um, and they will be different from the source release because they have different contents. So that's, that's something to keep in mind that occasionally trips up uh, projects as well. Oh, whoops. Anyway, that's it from me. Um, do we have any questions?